Welcome to the Listening Time Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Connor and you're listening to episode 123 of the Listening Time Podcast. I hope you're all doing great. Uh, At the time of recording this, it's the very end of summer here in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, And so autumn is just around the corner. In English, when we say that something is just around the corner, we're saying that it's about to appear or it's about to happen. It's gonna happen very soon. So fall is just around the corner and a lot of people are really happy about this because a lot of people here like this season. They like autumn They like to see the colors changing. They like the seasonal food. Uh, There are a lot of uh, different types of food um, that people start to eat during autumn that they don't eat during the spring or summer. And so uh, a lot of people like this season. One fun thing about this season is that there are a lot of activities for children For example, pumpkin patches, these uh, places where they sell pumpkins, but they also have a lot of activities uh, for kids. And me and my family, we're planning on going to a couple pumpkin patches this season. And I think that I'll do an episode on pumpkin patches. So you'll get to hear about that, hopefully. And I was thinking about this topic of fun activities for children uh, because I was thinking about pumpkin patches uh, and about uh, different things like that. And I decided that I wanted to do an episode uh, about some of my favorite uh, activities that I did when I was a kid. So my childhood activities specifically things that I did outdoors, things that I did outside. I thought it would be fun to uh, look back and remember uh, my childhood and some of my favorite things that I did outside. Uh, So I hope that this will be an interesting episode for you today. And before we start, I want to remind you that my new podcast is available now, U.S. Conversations, where I talk to different English teachers from around the U.S., and we talk about many things and have natural conversations at normal speed, and you have the transcript available with the definitions of key words and phrases that we use. So make sure to sign up for that if you're interested. The link is in the episode description below this episode. That's patreon.com slash US conversations. And if you want my specialized training to help you understand native speakers when they speak fast, then make sure to join my membership. The link is also in the description below this episode. So click on that and join if you're interested in getting my specialized training. And of course, if you're a Spanish or a Portuguese speaker, you can also check out my ebook if you want to start reading fiction in English. Those links are down below as well. And if you like this podcast, please share it with anyone else you know who's learning English. And please give it a five-star rating and write a review. All right. Let's get started. Are your ears ready? You know what time it is. It's listening time. All right, let's talk about some of my favorite childhood activities that I did. Some of my favorite things that I did outdoors. Because I did some things indoors as well. I had some uh, fun activities that I did inside. But... I want to focus on the outdoor activities today. So the first one that I want to talk about is building a treehouse. So 
you've probably seen this in movies or TV shows before, uh, where the kids build uh, some type of house in their backyard, maybe uh, in a big tree. And this is something that is a pretty classic tradition here in the US. Uh, people like tree houses. This is a fun thing for kids. However, I built a tree house that was a little bit different from what you're probably imagining. We didn't build a house that was uh, a closed um, box like you see in the movies usually. We built a tree house uh, where we just had these different platforms on different branches uh, of the tree. Uh, a platform is just a flat uh, space, and in this case, a space where you can stand on. So my friend and I, we uh, built this tree house that had many different platforms uh, at different levels and on different branches, and we would have to uh, climb to the different platforms using these steps that we also built. We used wood and nailed the wood into the tree to build steps that we could step on. By the way, when we say that you nail something, we're saying that you use a nail, this sharp little uh, tool, and you use that and you hit it into the object. You nail it. So we nailed these wooden steps into the tree trunk so that we could climb the tree uh, to get to the different platforms. I know that this might be a little difficult to visualize, but that's probably the best way that I can describe it. And building this tree house was really fun. I think we had more fun building the tree house than we did playing in the tree house. So it was really fun to construct this. And we were pretty young when we built this. I think I was like 10 years old, maybe. So we were young. Uh, it was probably a little dangerous but uh, we did it anyway. And uh, this was the first time that I really used a hammer and nails on my own. So I learned how to hammer things when I built this treehouse. And it was uh, a great place to play and to use our imagination to create games and things like that in this tree house. And in general, I always really liked climbing trees as a kid. That was always something that I enjoyed. And so this was a perfect project for me because I got the chance to climb this tree and also build something, use my imagination, play, etc. So that was one of my favorite activities as a kid. Another childhood activity that I wanted to mention is that I actually collected bugs for a time. Uh, the word bug just means insect, right? So I actually collected bugs uh, during a, a brief time in my life. Um, now, when I look back on this, it seems kind of gross to me. The word gross just means disgusting. So it seems kind of gross when I think back to all the bugs that I collected. Uh, I remember that in particular, I collected caterpillars, you know, these things that turn into butterflies, right? So I collected caterpillars and I remember putting them in a container and I tried to uh, create a good environment for them in this container. I put 
leaves and sticks and things like that inside, and I fed them fruit. I remember feeding them cantaloupe, actually. If you don't know what a cantaloupe is, this is that type of、uh, melon that's orange on the inside. That's cantaloupe. So I remember feeding them cantaloupe and cleaning the container. And I don't know why I was so interested in them, but for some reason, I like to collect them and watch them interact with each other. In this container. And I also remember collecting some beetles.、Uh, I remember doing that. I don't remember all of the other specific bugs that I collected, but I just remember that I liked to watch them interact with each other. I would combine some different bugs together and watch what they did to see if they would. Um, get along, or if they would fight, or whatever.、Uh, by the way, the phrasal verb get along means that you、uh, are in harmony with another person or another animal. So it means that you don't fight with each other, you get along. So I think that I liked to experiment a little bit and see if these bugs. Uh, would get along with each other. So that's another activity that I did as a kid. And another one was making paper airplanes. So I loved making paper airplanes as a kid,、uh, especially because I loved、uh, trying to find the different combinations of folds. That would result in the best airplane.、Uh, I don't know if you have much experience making paper airplanes, but、uh, of course, it really、um, matters how you fold、uh, the paper. So, if you fold the paper in certain ways and you follow a certain design, you can make a pretty impressive airplane, actually. Uh, some airplanes that we made actually、uh, stayed in the air for quite a while. And I remember that we had one design in particular that was the best one. So my neighbor and I、uh, found this、uh, perfect design that、uh, we would recreate、uh, time and time again. And create these airplanes and try to make them fly as high and as long as possible. And so、uh, it was a very intricate design.、Uh, the word intricate means that something is very detailed. And so this was an intricate design. I still remember how to make this paper airplane even now as an adult. Uh, that's how many times I made it.、Uh, I made it so many times that、uh, I still have that muscle memory. I still remember exactly how to make this airplane. So、uh, we found that perfect design and we always try to、uh, improve it or find an even better design. So we found some other combinations of folds. That worked pretty well, but we never ended up、uh, beating that one really good design that we found.、Um, but it was really fun to do that and to experiment with different、uh, types of designs. I really like that. I like experimenting with different options and trying to create different designs、uh, with things like that. That's something that I enjoy, and I really enjoyed it as a kid. So, that was another good activity that I had. And another one, uh, this one uh, was an activity that I did more as a teenager.、Uh, this was airsoft. So, if you don't know what 
airsoft is this is uh, a sport where you use these fake guns uh, they're fake in the sense that they're not real guns with real bullets obviously they're guns that shoot these uh, bb's we might call them these airsoft bb's these round little um, things, uh, these things that you shoot out of the gun that hurt you, but not too much. It's painful when you get hit. Uh, if it hits you uh, on your skin and you don't have any protection, but it doesn't really injure you that much. So in general, <laughs> it's okay to shoot each other from a safe distance if you're well protected and especially with eye protection so if you play this sport you should wear some type of uh, glasses or something like that because obviously uh, you don't want to get hit in the eye so we wore eye protection and we didn't really wear much uh, other protection besides that so when we would actually uh, hit each other or shoot each other, it hurt. Uh, not that bad, like I said, but it hurt. And so there was a little bit of a punishment for getting shot. So this added more motivation to try to do your best and not get shot by the other person. Uh, we had a lot of fun with this game. Uh, I played mostly with my neighbor, but I also had some other friends that also liked uh, Airsoft. And I had pistols and I had rifles. I had different types of Airsoft guns and I would practice with them to try to get better at aiming. Uh, when you aim, this means that you point the gun to where you want to shoot it. This is aiming. So I didn't have very good aim, but I tried to practice this and get better at it. And uh, we used our surroundings, our environment here around my house, um, to create uh, a place that was fun to play airsoft. So we would use trees and the tall grass and uh, different walls. We would use these to hide behind and to uh, recreate uh, a war type experience uh, where we would hide and then come out and shoot. And of course, uh, you can imagine uh, teenage boys, we had a really uh, good imagination uh, to play this type of sport. So that was something that I played around the outside of my house, behind my house, because there was open land there. And uh, I remember one time when we didn't play at my house, we actually played inside my friend's house. And this was the dumbest thing that we could have done. We actually played airsoft inside his house. We were shooting at each other inside and this was dangerous and we almost broke uh, windows and other things like that. So I have that memory and uh, I'll always remember playing inside that one time but when i think back and i remember that uh, i think about how dumb i was uh, in certain situations when i was a teenager but yeah i had to mention that because uh, that's uh, something that always comes to mind when i remember my airsoft days so that was another activity. And another one was something that we called cardboarding. 
So we would slide down this big hill on pieces of cardboard. Cardboard is that material uh, that is used to package items to uh, transport them or ship them to another place. By the way, when we say shipping, uh, when we say that an item ships, we're saying that it is sent from one place to another. So cardboard is that material that's used to ship items, to package them and ship them. So we would uh, cut big pieces of cardboard from these different boxes and we would sit on them and then slide down this big hill that was behind my house. So this was something that uh, my friend came up with. By the way, when we say that you come up with something, we're saying that you think of an idea. So this is something that he came up with and I uh, joined in and we had a lot of fun doing this. It didn't always work really well because sometimes uh, the grass uh, grew in a way that didn't allow us to slide very well. So we had to work around that and do our best to um, be able to make it to the bottom of the hill on this cardboard. Um, but it was actually a little bit dangerous because we weren't able to stop very well. Um, you don't really have a brake system <laughs> with this type of cardboard, obviously. So if we made it to the bottom of the hill on the cardboard, sometimes we wouldn't be able to stop well and we would kind of um, fall off of it uh, and maybe uh, it would hurt a little bit uh, or we might run into something and we would crash, right? So it was a little bit dangerous and I think there were a few times when uh, I got hurt but nothing serious just minor things. But that was an activity that was uh, a fun one in the sense that we created it and it wasn't something that other people really did. Uh, we didn't learn about it from anyone else. My friend uh, just created it. He had this idea and we just did it and we were the only ones that we knew who did this type of activity. So uh, that was pretty cool. It was born out of a kid's imagination, right? It was just something that we decided to do because it sounded fun and we had the material and we made it work. We uh, did it until um, we found the perfect way to do it and then we had fun with it. Uh, I really uh, like when kids come up with uh, interesting games and activities like that. Uh, I think that's really cool. And speaking of that, uh, the last activity that I want to talk about uh, is playing make-believe. In English, when we say that you make-believe or you play make-believe, we're saying that you create situations and games from your imagination, uh, things that aren't real, but you imagine them and then you play uh, this game or you uh, do this activity. So I played make-believe a lot when I was around the age of six uh, or seven, around that age. I remember uh, playing with my old neighbor in my old house, uh, my first house, and I remember uh, inventing different games together where we would have to make believe. We had to pretend and imagine uh, these different situations. 
By the way, in this context, the word pretend means that you imagine something that isn't real, but you act like it's real. Okay, so for example, if I pretend that I'm a superhero, this means that I'm acting and imagining that I'm a superhero, even though it's not real, right? So I remember pretending and uh, coming up with all of these different scenarios with my neighbor, and we uh, just went through these whole storylines and pretended that we were different characters doing different things, and it was tons of fun. I remember that our favorite thing to uh, pretend was that we were on a big boat. We called it the boat game. And we pretended that we were these sailors on this big boat and we were navigating the open seas and we encountered all of these different complications and problems. I don't know where we got that idea from. I have no idea how we started that, but I just remember that we loved playing this boat game and using our imagination. So I really like that type of activity, that make-believe type of activity, because I think it's really good for kids. It helps kids use their imagination and not just rely on uh, being given the stimulation from a screen or from something else. Uh, kids have to think of things on their own and create things from nothing. I really like that, and I think it's also beneficial in the sense that it helps kids become more social, right? You have to work with your friends, uh, and you have to um, agree with each other and get along with each other while you're uh, imagining these situations and playing um, in this context. And I think it also helps kids uh, become a little more independent and it helps them uh, begin to play on their own and not just need their parents to play with them, for example. So I think that there are a lot of good benefits for kids uh, to play make-believe. I really like that and uh, I'm interested to uh, see when my son will start to play make-believe and create scenarios like that uh, that are imaginary. Uh, I'm looking forward to that stage in his life. I think that will be fun. All right, why don't I stop there? I hope this episode was interesting for you. Remember that you can sign up for my new podcast, U.S. Conversations. It's an exclusive podcast, so you need to sign up, and you'll get one new conversation every month where I talk to a different person from a different part of the United States, and you have the transcript available with the definitions of keywords and phrases that we use. So the link is in the description below this episode. That's patreon.com slash US conversations. And if you want help understanding native speakers, if you want my training, then make sure to sign up for my membership. Uh, the link is also down below. And if you like this podcast, I'd appreciate it if you could share it with anyone else you know who's learning English. And please give it a five-star rating and write a review. All right. Thank you for listening to this episode. And I'll talk to you on the next episode of Listening Time. Listening Time.